Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. When I worked in India in the 1990s, I often noticed dark marks in the cheeks of some adults, particularly those with an increased body mass index. The term used when I was a trainee was seborrheic melanosis. Today, it has a specific name, a newly described entity called maturational hyperpigmentation. This condition was first reported by Dr. Melvin Alexander in 2006. He noted that his brother, an ENT specialist, developed pigmentation on his cheeks. He observed similar pigmentary changes in individuals from India as well. Dr. Alexander also observed a common factor in those with this peculiar disorder. They were all overweight. He conducted a study of eight patients and concluded that the entity was not uncommon typically had an onset in adulthood and was not initiated by any accidental trauma or injury. Most patients in the study did not have an allergy or a family history of the disorder. Maturational hyperpigmentation is an acquired hypermelanosis of bilateral cheeks that has a propensity to extend superiorly to the temples and inferiorly to the fold between the cheeks and the lips. It tends to be ill-defined, unlike melasma that has usually very distinct borders. It is limited only to part of the cheeks as opposed to the most expansive distribution of melasma. Most cases are observed in individuals of African or Indian descent. The condition is usually asymptomatic and the reason patients present to dermatologists is because of the cosmetic concern. Biopsy shows melanocytic proliferation in the basal layer of the epidermis and features of post-inflammatory pigmentation are not seen. Here is an example of maturational hyperpigmentation revealing a patch of dark brown pigmentation with ill-defined margins and conspicuous granular surface over the right cheek as marked by the white arrow extending from the angle of the eye to nearly the side of the mouth. Similar but lighter pigmentation is seen over the left cheek suggestive of an evolving lesion. Another example of a 51-year-old Indian man with a hyperpigmented polygonal patch with rough texture and granularity in the central portion or the right zygomatic region of the face. This person also had type 2 diabetes with metabolic syndrome. So what are the potential causes of maturational hyperpigmentation? The presence of fasting hyperglycemia and hyperinsulinemia in more than 70% of patients suggest that it could be a potential cutaneous marker of metabolic syndrome, particularly with diabetes. It has an adult onset and is associated with obesity. It is very doubtful if there's a relationship with sun exposure. In the original series, it was suggested that it was more prominent on the patient's preferred sleeping site. Therefore, an element of pressure or trauma may also contribute. The differential diagnoses include melasma, exogenous ochronosis, lichen planus pigmentosis, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and frictional melanosis. However, maturational hypermelanosis has a reasonably specific feature such as relatively softer surface with conspicuous but fine granularity and indistinct margins on gross morphology, and a few suggestive changes on demoscopy and histopathology as well. So how do we manage it? The treatment can be divided into general measures and more specific treatments. Simple measures include good sunblock cream, avoiding perfumed products on the skin, and also ensuring that we do not rub or scratch the area as these factors can increase facial pigmentation. Avoiding lying down on the side where there is more pigmentation may also help. Optimal control of diabetes or pre-diabetes should be recommended. If we can introduce good lifestyle factors like diet and exercise and also emphasize on weight loss, it will be beneficial in the long-term control of this condition. Specific treatments include topical agents, chemical peels and lasers. We should treat this as an abortive form of acanthosis nigricans which usually affects the axillae and groins. This is because the same underlying metabolic process occurs, causes the skin pigmentation in both conditions. Topical retinoids like tretinoin 0.05 to 0.1% are considered the first-line therapy for insulin-resistant acanthosis nigricans by modifying keratinization rate. 
However, it requires application for prolonged durations, maybe four to six months, and improves the textural change more than the hyperpigmentation. Chemo exfoliation with 30% salicylic acid at two to six week intervals in conjunction with topical therapy of 4% hydroquinone twice daily and tretinoin 0.05% three to five times a week was recommended by investigators of one study. Another investigator treated it with 1064 nanometer ND YAG laser along with the topical agents that, which have been mentioned. Chemical peels like glycolic acid peels are also effective. Post peel recommendations include sun protection as well as prohibition of scrubs, waxing or manipulation of the skin. Topical hydroquinone has been used before or after treatment to decrease the risk of peel induced post inflammatory pigmentation and for continued treatment of the underlying disorder. If topical tretinoin has been used before, it should be discontinued one week before chemo exfoliation to minimize the irritation. Topical corticosteroids can also be added, for example, fluocinolone cream twice daily for up to three months. Theoretically, we could also use the treatment suggested for acanthosis nigricans. This includes topical calcipotriol ointment as it binds to vitamin D receptors in the keratinocytes, thus decreasing their proliferation. In addition, combinations of tretinoin cream with 12% ammonium lactate cream has been successfully used. Systemic treatment like isotretinoin or acetretin may be tried if the patient fails to respond to topical therapy. Oral metformin to increase insulin sensitivity may be a further option. Various lasers like Q-switched and alexandrite lasers have been used for acanthosis nigricans in the flexural areas, so could be cautiously considered for maturational hyperpigmentation as well. In conclusion, there is a possibility that maturational hyperpigmentation and acanthosis nigricans are part of the same spectrum of cutaneous markers of metabolic syndrome. It is probably under-recognized. Apart from potential metabolic complications, it is also cosmetically bothersome, especially in women. Along with lifestyle changes, the use of topical retinoids, peeling agents and lasers may be effective in improving the pigmentary and textural abnormality of this facial melanosis. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.